Hi, thank you very much for being here. Uh, releasing fast, easy, and consistently in Box at Day Bucharest 2022. Thank you very much for having me here. I'm super excited. And I did have a lot of technical issues during the session. So this is how you should have seen it. I'm Michelle Reese. I'm from Mexico. I live in Switzerland. I'm a Java champion and I work for a company, JFrog. And if you're watching this after, the, after um, we still have this particular raffle. So please do enter. Uh, you can get really cool t-shirts like this one and other stuff. So please do enter. And the whole purpose of this session is to remind you that we spend a lot of time uh, building our software. And it's not only while we are building software, um, but all other places in our lives, things go wrong and don't go as expected. So when we finally reach that final stage, when everything is ready to be released, we certainly want things to be stress-free and easy. And releasing a new version of our code, it's a routine operation. So we should be able to do it following a consistent process. Once we define the desired output, the distribution channels and the format, we should be able to execute them in automation, even the announce part. So if you have adopted the Agile and DevOps and DevSecOps, or even the ship left practices, you know that releasing should happen continuously and sometimes uh, with a fast cadence. We certainly want things to be stress-free and easy. That is the goal. So we are not alone in this pursuit of making releases fast, easy, and consistent. There is a lot of communities and open source projects that are already doing it. And we have chosen a tool that help us do these releases. So now let's review one extra or new tool that you should consider if you are doing releases either in open source or inside your company. So it's JReleaser. JReleaser is a, a, a release automation tool. Its goal is to simplify creating releases and publish artifacts to multiple package managers while providing customizable options. However, you may use it with your products, even if they don't require publishing binary assets. You may use it to create git release tags, chain logs assets, and on releases, create additional binaries and files to be published. So JReleaser supports any kind of project, regardless of its source language, and it produces binaries or not, although it provides additional benefits if you are working with Java. So here we see a little bit about how it happens. So you, you, you may use it either in the CLI or with your build tools like Ant, Maven, Gradle, and it will create releases into, for example, Git services, GitHub, GitLab, Gitea, or any generic Git. And you can also publish your binaries in different types of packet managers, like for example, JBank, or homebrew, scoop, chocolate. And once you have finally done this last step, you can create announcements, um, emails, Mastodon, uh, uh, Mattermost, Sulip, or Twitter. So these are the integrations that JReleaser has already. Um, GitHub, GitLab, as I said, we upload, in this case, the demo that you will see later on, it is publishing to uh, JFrog Artifactory or any generic HTTP a repository or AWS S3. And as I said, the, the package managers that you are able to package your binaries are to Homebrew, SDK Man, Macports, Snap, uh, Chocolate, Chocolate, chocolate if you're using Windows, uh, spec if you're, you, you are creating RPMs. And uh, you can announce, as I said already, uh, well, if you are um, 
um, targeting SDK, well, you can make the, the announcements directly into the SDK man or Gitter email. So these are actually the, the tasks or the steps that JReleaser will help you do. And these steps can run all when you do the full release or you can do them, execute them separately. There are dependencies between them, so keep that in mind and don't worry, it will tell you what are the dependencies. And if it actually fails one step, it will stop, except if it's the announcement. If the announcement fail, it will only publish you a warning. So in a disassemble step, this is where it assembles the distribution so that JLink and native images, the output will automatically configure or update matching the names distributions for prepare package and publish. So because this has to uh, have some platform specific um, configurations, this steps is invoked separately. The change of this ha happens in this step happens some kind of magic. We have some replace or yeah, really should have some replace that can beautify your chain log. So, for example, if you follow certain con convention that you will see in the demo, it actually can replace even for icons. So it actually turns out really pretty. Checksums. Here's a step where it calculates all the SHAs uh, for all the input files. And the input files, you define them in the file section. So next, if you have defined your PGP signatures and it's enabled and configured, you can actually sign all the files defined in the file section and even the checksum uh, file. So we depend on the, on the checksum. And upload, this step is optional like sign. And as, because as we said, you can or cannot, if you decide to publish artifacts. So this uploads artifacts and files to the configuration destination. And this step also uploads the signatures if it's enabled and all the distribution artifacts. And it actually will put it where, um, where like it will also upload the, all the files that are inside the file section of the configuration. And the release, this is when it creates the release, for example, for the Git releases, and it uploads all the checksum, the signatures, all the distribution artifacts, and every file matching in the configure file section. And creates the change log and the tags are releases. And this depends on the upload. The prepare, this is when it's preparing all the files or, or the files required by the packagers like Homebrew, depending on the templates, this is where this is happening. It also depends on the checksums. And the package, this is when it processes the files created by the previous step, the prepare step, to create the specific packages. For example, in the snap package, packager, uh, may log in into your Snapcraft store and publish a snap if there is a flag turn false or true, it depends. And depends on prepare again. Publish. This is actually when publish all the package files into the, the respective destination. For example, when Homebrew is actually updating the Homebrew tab or for JBAN is creating the JBAN catalog, merging into the JBAN catalog catalog repository and depends on package. And finally, the announce. This is, is the announce where you release to different mediums like Twitter, Sulip, SDK, and obviously it requires that the distribution files. Uh, no, that truly doesn't require nothing except for chain log. But if, for example, SDK man requires that your files have been released. Um, all the model is defined in the JReleaser YAML. Well, this is the example of the YAML file that we, you also see in the demo. This is actually the same file. And this file is, can be generating using JReleaser init command, or you can copy and paste. Um, if you don't like JSON, uh, YAML, sorry. <laughs> There's JSON, Tomel, Maven DSL, and Gradle DSL. So thank you very much for uh, paying attention to the theory and you will see the demo right about now. 
So this is a very simple repository in GitHub, and this is only a Hello World application. So as you can see, we don't have any releases already, and there is one important file that I want to show you even here, the gReleaser YAML file. This is the external configuration file where we define the model. So I already cloned this repository locally so we can see the same thing here. So first of all, we need to check uh, what version of gReleaser we have. We can do that with SDK man. So here it will list all the different versions. So it's already in one, milestone one. So yay, and we're going to use that one. And we can verify the version by running your releaser version. Nice. So we have the, the version that we really want. So again, if we see the files of this project, we see that this is a Maven project. And now we can go into the JReleaser model. So if I show the contents of the JReleaser YAML file, we can see that at the beginning we have all the coordinates uh, of the project. As I said, one of the things that I really like about JReleaser is that there is a lot of information that we can reuse for different purposes, for different publisher packagers, or in an announcement. So it's actually really nice that we only defined it once and we can leverage that. In the released, uh, we, we notice and we know that we're going to do a GitHub release where GitHub actually supports announcements. So we are configuring and setting that we want announcements. Remember when I mentioned the change log, we can make it more beautiful. This is where that magic happens. So we have different categories, for example, features, is issues, and tasks. And it's just going to be a kind of a replacement. If we follow the convention uh, in our commit messages, this will look really, really nice. Um, there is something that is not here reflected, but you can use is conventional commits. So it, we can even simplify this configuration file. Next is where we define what packagers we want to create. So for example, when we run this demo, we will be creating the homebrew formula. And we are also going to create the distributions where we define what are the binaries, the zip file and the targc files. And finally, we are defining our targets. Where do we want to upload our, our releases? And as you can see, I'm defining Artifactory, yay! And this is actually my personal uh, free tier Artifactory repository. So perfect. Of course, we need to store our credentials somewhere and they have to be secrets. So there is a file inside my, um, my user configuration, personal user configuration, this is not the project configuration, where I store all my secrets. And believe me, they are there. I'm not going to show you <laughs> my tokens nor anything like that. Okay, let's build the project. So, leave it. As we said, this is generating the binaries, calculating, this is only generating the, the binaries. So we generate the zip file, the targc file. So let's run the JReleaser configuration. It fails. Why is it failing? because we are not defining, and it clearly says there, it's not defined the JRelease project version environment variable. We can actually define it inside our, our uh, configuration file, but it's more interesting when you can export it as, as environment variable because we can externalize it and 
it is easy to modify or in a part of our CI or CDM um, workflow. So let's define it and let's run it again. So here, and this is actually something really interesting. As you can see, it's taking all the, the information from our model and also enriching it with our secrets. It's not displaying neither my tokens nor anything that it shouldn't be seen, even by myself or any agent. So we have where we configure the distributions, uh, the packagers, the project information, and all and all the, uh, yes, the checksums and, uh, and, and the change log, or at least the configuration that we, do, we created for the conventional commits and the replacement. So now we can run, finally, uh, the full release. What is going to happen here? As I said, sorry, as we so undefined in the configuration file, when we run this particular command, we will create the git release and the homebrew formula. So let's do that. We, as, as we were discussing about the different important ac actions that your release creates, it's um, calculating the checksum, signing, if we define the, our digital signatures, it will do that. Here, it actually create all this, calculated the checksums, and uploaded the artifacts, and prepared the distributions in 10 seconds, which is actually pretty good. So let's change to GitHub. Remember, and see, still zero releases, no releases there. Now, what happens when I reload the page? Yay, we see the release version 1.0.0, that one that we defined in our environment variable. And as we can see, the change log looks fantastic, even has icons, so you can define whatever you want. Here in the contributors, even, you can see uh, who has contributed or the commits, the author of the different commits. And we can list the assets, and as I said, we have the binaries and also the checksums. And remember that we were configuring in the model the, the, the join discussions. So because GitHub support that, we, can, we have enabled this functionality so we can start any discussions there. And now we can see how or how did we actually publish the artifacts to the artifact repository. So in this case, you can see, and we're refreshing before we didn't have anything. I didn't, couldn't double click on it and show the contents. We can see that we have our application version 1.0.0, yay! So here we have our binaries. And of course we can see when they were created and where they were published and the checksums with SHA 256, SHA 1, etc, etc. So this is, as you can see, super easy. The other thing that we were creating, remember when we defined, is as a package manager, the homebrew formula. So there was at the beginning only 14 repositories and now if I refresh, we have 15, yay, being the latest repository, the Homebrew tab. Now, as you can see, the Homebrew tab was created by the J Releaser project, and there you can see the J Releaser bot. <laughs> and it will actually create our formula. And this formula is based on the template that you can modify, and it's actually pointing out to the URL of our binary. So how cool is that. So do we trust that this homebrew tab actually, uh, um, this formula actually works? Don't trust me. Let's double check and verify. So let's install the formula, my user, the tab and the app. Let's click enter, yes. 
this will actually fetch the formula and it will use the URL that we defined and it's installing and wow How cool is that? I have my Hello World is actually being served with Homebrew. I have all the advantages of Homebrew managing my version and I'm making it so easy for users to find it, to use it. So we are going to delete everything because there is another functionality that I want to show you. Um, this is doing it locally from our terminal, but that wouldn't be so, well, actually it's very useful, but we can automate this even more. So I'm deleting everything to have a fresh start, no releases, no published artifacts, no, even I will, we will delete the repository of the homebrew tab. And so it shouldn't be there anymore. And Obviously, this project is published in the GitHub repository, so guess what we're going to use? We are going to use GitHub Actions. So, the same thing, almost the same thing, but from GitHub. We have, we have defined in the, in the, in the, the different GitHub actions and the workflows. Here we have this step that is making, that's actually creating the magic, the checkout version two, where we are invoking, and where we'll depend on the setup Java version two for Java version 11 of the distribution. Well, this is actually, we, we can define this. And here is where we are verifying and actually building our, our artifacts. And after building our artifacts, we actually are populating some GitHub environments. We are executing the JReleaser action and where we passed some of this um, tokens and secrets. So this is really interesting. And yes, so this is our CLI really section. And let's make it work. All right, while it's running, it, the output should be exactly the same. There shouldn't be any difference uh, to what we achieved with our CLI. So right now we are setting up um, invoking the build with Maven, we are creating the artifacts, and right now we is the part where we are creating um, the checksums. We are generating also the change log, and we are if we have defined the signatures that will happen here too, and creating the homebrew formula, actually doing also the git release, and yay everything is green so far. So let's go back to the repository. And again, we have a release version one there and it should look exactly the same as the one that we generated a few minutes ago. And again, we should see the homebrew tab repository. And let's go back to that, okay. Again, as we can see, this was created, all this publishing or uploading of this files was 43 seconds ago. And we need to double check that everything is published in our artifactory or in our, our binary repository. And as you can see, there they are. And we can see also what time they were created and all the information like the SHA, the checksums that we generated just now. 